Hi, this is Simon from writtenlegalenglish.com and welcome to another video where I'm going to talk about how you learn legal English and to help you avoid common mistakes in learning legal English. And in this particular lesson, I'm going to be looking at the mistake, mistake number four, don't just read court judgments. If you click on the link below this video, it will take you to my blog, which will show you the rest of the mistakes that people make when they're learning legal English. And on that blog, you'll see a brief discussion about what the mistake is and how you should avoid making it. And this video is just to go into a little bit more depth to explain the, the, the wider discussion. Okay, why should you not just read court judgments. Well, the reason why this is a mistake is because I saw on the internet on a forum someone was saying how can I improve my or someone was asking how can I improve my legal English skills and someone said read court judgments. That's a fantastic that's a fantastic thing to do. This is not good advice. First of all, if you're beginning to learn legal English, this is way too difficult. Court judgments are very often written in a very difficult way, and very often they are long, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 pages long. I say in the blog, it's a bit like taking someone who can't swim very well and throwing them into the deep end to see if they'll survive, because this is very much the experience. You don't know anything or you don't know much about legal English, and then all of a sudden you've got to read what some learned judge is saying in probably quite a difficult way. How is this going to help you? How do you know what language to take away? How do you know what is good, what is bad? How do you know, in some cases, what the judgment is in any case? So this is a really difficult way for someone to discover legal English writing. It is really like being thrown into the deep end. And of course, it doesn't make the learning experience any fun either because, okay, sometimes learning is learning, sometimes learning can't be fun, it's just hard work, but we want to make, we want to make learning as fun as it's possible to do so. If I was teaching legal English in my school and I said to a new student, okay, welcome to the first lesson, here's a 40 page court judgment, off you go and read it and tell me where the good thing, uh, tell me the good points then I wouldn't see that student again, and I wouldn't blame that student. So this in general is not good. It's, ident it's really difficult to identify what the good points are, and it's not in the slightest bit a fun way to learn legal English. So if someone says to you, read this, or you have to read court judgments, what should you do? Well, my advice at the beginning, at least, of your legal English journey is not to do it. Leave this for later on once you've got a good overall picture of general legal English and then look at court judgments when you need to specialize. At that point, it became that that particular case in that particular area of law will make a lot more sense than just having very little knowledge about legal English and then just having to read something. So I would say don't do it at the beginning. Do it much later on in your legal English journey and then if you have to do it, search the internet for judges that do write well and read their judgments. The two judges that I made in uh, that I mentioned in the blog, Lord Denning, very well known for writing in a very plain way, and a very good way, and a very celebrated way, and also Judge Scalia, uh, the late uh, Judge Scalia from the U.S also known for being a good writer of uh, law, of uh, writing good legal judgments. There are others as well, but you'll quickly find that there aren't that many, which is which kind of highlights the point of being able to write well in the first place, because if everyone could do it, and if this was the standard, then I could give you a list of 20 judges. Yeah, they're all fantastic writers, but actually... It's really, really difficult to find judges who are celebrated as writing well. And that should tell you something about the need to improve your writing in legal English. Now, on my webpage, there's a fantastic resource there to help you practice your legal writing skills, which is the page Free Legal English Exercises, in which there is a section where you can practice plain English redrafting. I find a terrible piece of legalese, and then I translate that into plain English, applying plain English principles to keep the message still legal, still businesslike, still appropriate, but much easier for the reader to read, which is the end goal at the end of the day. So there you can practice your skills. 
Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you've got any questions about the content in this video, please leave a comment below. And please make sure that you subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all of the new content that I produce. And I'll see you again soon.